What's up, everybody? Welcome to the channel. I'm here recording at 4.19 a.m. Just one of those nights where you can't really, like, stay asleep. But at the same time, we, we went to bed early last night. I got my six out. We're good. But today, we are checking out Credence Clearwater Revival for our first time. We're going to check out the song Fortunate Son. Uh, this song was uh, sponsored at, uh, via donation by uh, Brenda Whitman. Thank you so much, Brenda. So we checked out The Who a while back ago, and, and Brenda sent this suggestion, I think, in response to that. Uh, just based on a conversation we had around kind of like anti-war protest. And Brenda says that in the 70s, there's just great anti-war, anti-establishment songs from the era. And one of those is Fortunate Son by uh, Credence Clearwater Revival. Heard you mention, so Brenda says, I heard you mentioned uh, seeing Forrest Gump, one of my favorite movies of all time. Like we quote it endlessly in our family for some reason. The guitar riff you hear in the scenes with a helicopter flying over the, the jungle is from this song. It's based upon the lead singer and songs uh, author John Fogarty's experience in Vietnam. He said, you did not see boys from wealthy uh, families in Vietnam. It was boys from the poorest areas of the country who were sent there. And if your parents were we wealthy or po uh, politically connected, you were drafted. It's probably one of the best known anti-war songs of the era. And the link below is a performance at Royal Albert Hall, which sounds just like the studio recording. So right off the bat, this song is going to have mostly like virtually everything uh, I enjoy in music, especially from these from this era. You know, I have grown to, you know, care more about uh, striving to think for yourself and whatnot. And I find a lot of the music and poetry from this era kind of, you know, evokes that those those feelings. Well, the other I miss uh, musicians and our most famous people today being the most talented it doesn't seem like that is the really the case not saying that there aren't talented musicians in my era it just seemed like it was way more common back then so trying to like experience in that live i can't wait they just posted this onto youtube a year ago and already has 2.4 million views people seem to love it so let's do this what we're gonna do is listen to this i might have to pause it maybe just once it's, a, it's only a two minute long song but it's more for, you know, copyright reasons that we were apparently supposed to do this. But we'll talk more in depth um, at the end of the video, okay? So, making their first time appearance onto the channel, Credence Clearwater, uh, Clearwater Revival. Let's, let's roll it. Okay, I recognize. Yep, that guitar riff, yep. This isn't the studio recording? Jeez. Hold up. That bass player, is this like, is that John Lennon? Like, it looks like John Lennon, right? Who is this? Okay, well, right off the bat, the top comment on this video, the bassist looks like every Beatle combined. <laughs> oh, man, that's hilarious. Okay, so very, very memorable guitar riff, for sure. I do remember that from Forrest Gump. This song rocks hard, dude. I can't really hear the lyrics so well, so we're going li to listen to them some more here in a sec. But gosh, they sound good, dude. See, like that's what I'm saying. Like the musicianship was in a whole nother level back then. Dude, the drummer has like four things on his drum set.
It ain't me. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I would I was starting to understand the lyrics there a little bit, and okay, Brenda, you really helped me understand what I was in for. I kind of wish that I wish the song was longer. Is my only thing. Like that guitar riff. Like that's such a good guitar riff. That's so good. Yeah, that sounds so good. Yeah, it's my only complaint, dude. The song should have been longer. It was great. I Maybe it wasn't a common thing to make long songs back then. I don't know. Some folks are born made to wave the flag. Ooh, they're red, white, and blue. And when the band plays Hail to the Chief, ooh, they point the cannon at you, Lord. Wow. It ain't me. It ain't me. I ain't no senator's son. It ain't me. I ain't no fortune one. Wow, dude. So I actually didn't know this. That Again, if you're new to the channel, I'm an immigrant, right? Big fan of this country. Even, like, flaws and all, you know? I grew up in, like, six, seven different, like, six different countries, you know? And you you, you just learn that uh, humans are fallen. Doesn't matter which country they're in, you know? But America's different, baby. But, nonetheless, um, I, I, I always enjoy learning every, every side of it. Um... So I, I didn't know, to know this, that for the draft, um, because you hear draft and you're like, oh, it, it means it's going to be an, an equal misfortune for everybody, right? But but no, and, and I, I didn't know that. It's sad, bro. Some folks are born silver spoon in hand. Lord, they don't help themselves, y'all. But I feel weird reading. But when the tax man comes to the door, Lord, the house looks like a rummage sale. Wow. I ain't no millionaire, son. I ain't no fortunate one. Just the way they repeat that, it ain't me, it ain't me. Some folks inherit star-spangled eyes, wow. Ooh, they send you down to war, Lord. And when you ask them how, should, how much should we give, ooh, they only answer more, 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 y'all. Wow. Some inherit star-spangled eyes. I could be wrong, but what that tells me is like, maybe at least back then, the, these pro-American people might have been those who were more well off because if they were more well off they might have been avoiding all of this i don't know yeah it's just the rich had to go to war i mean didn't have to go to war the poor did it's what it what i okay what i in, appreciate about the song it's not a anti-american or anti-troop you know it's just bringing up it's it's pointing out the greatest the the saddest part of it though that only certain people were drafted, which is very, which is very sad, which is why, like, that's an effective song, bro. Wow. It's just poetically describing a, again, a very sad scenario. John Fogarty wrote the song to show how people with power and money try to break rules. Some influential people in the USA saved their sons from going to Vietnam, Vietnam using their connections, while others would hide their taxes despite being wealthy. The song speaks more to the unfairness of class than war itself. It's the old saying about rich men making war and poor men having to fight them. Wow, dude. Yeah, I mean, it's a it's a good reminder for all of us right now, dude. A lot of war and speak like rumors of war, you know. And and what's weird is that it, we're not, we're not going to speak about any and and take sides here. It, but one of the things that we are witnessing, I think, one of the things that's been alarming to me though. Uh, most of the people who are pushing war aren't going to pay the price for it. It seems like to me. And if anything, some seem to like, act, like actually make money off of it. Well, some of us have to pay it. They have to pay with that money or even worse off. Some of us or our loved ones are actually going to lose their lives in it. That's why we gotta, we gotta be careful, man. Look at that, dude. That's a great song. In two minutes, it's just making me like reconsider a lot of things that I like see in the news and whatnot. That's a lie. I don't watch the news. What the freak am I talking about? But anyway, anxious to hear your guys' thoughts. Awesome to check out a classic like this. That, uh, that was, I mean, fun isn't the right word, but I, I enjoyed that song.
Thank you, Brenda. Guys, we'll see you all soon. Thank you for being here. And much love, everybody. I'm really enjoying the classic rock, so keep the suggestions coming. Seriously.